We're going to talk about transformations this lesson. We're going to check the effects of that number three on the parent function two to the x. So we know that we've been talking about exponential functions. So I'm going to go ahead and graph two to the power x. And you notice it is an exponential growth model. So what is the three going to do or what is the effect will the three have on the um, the function itself and we're going we're going to investigate so we're going to go ahead and type in the new function so we have three times uh, two to the power x three times two to the power x and I'm going to go ahead and graph it and you notice that it kind of goes it kind of goes up more faster in this case here uh, this effect is called stretching stretching so what does the three have what effect does it have it's going to stretch it it will vertically stretch the graph by a factor of three. Okay. Now we're going to see what that one third, one divided by three and what its effect it's going to have on the parent function. So I'm not going to say three. What I'm going to say is one third. And I'm going to ignore the uh, I'm going to ignore the the negative for right now. And we're going to see what effect that one third does to the parent function. And I want you to think about what's happening. So no longer is that one third stretching it, it's actually compressing it. So I'm gonna write first. So one third will compress the parent function the negative, you're going to see the effect that the negative is going to have. So I'm going to go ahead and add it. I'm going to go ahead and add the negative. And remember, we've talked about the negative. Uh, go ahead and pause and think about what the neg negative is going to do. Go ahead and write down your thoughts. As you can see, the negative will reflect the parent function over the x-axis. So the negative will reflect the parent over the x-axis. Okay. So once again, we're going to investigate what's going to happen if I if I add three to the parent function. So I'm going to write two to the x. I'm going to write two to the x plus three. Go ahead and take ten seconds to think about what do you think it's going to do and jot down what do you think it's going to what effect it's going to have. So we have 10 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and graph. And you're gonna notice the parent function and the new function. There's a parent function. And there is a new function, so you know what happened. The parent function shifted three units up. The parent function.
will shift three units up. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out what's going to happen if you have 2 to the x minus, minus 2. So let's go ahead and graph that. Uh, go ahead and take 10 seconds to think about what's going to happen. In this case, the parent function will shift two units down. So now you notice that we have 10 to the power x minus 6. And so uh, we're going to figure out what that minus 6 does. Uh, I'm going to plot it here. We have 10 to the power 6. But now, I mean 10 to the power x. But now you notice that I will have 10 to the power x minus 6. So go ahead and think about what's going to happen to the parent function 10 to the power x. And when you compare it to 10 to the power x minus 6. And I'm going to graph now. Okay, you notice that the parent function will shift to the right. Okay, so now we're going to compare that to 10 to the power x plus 5. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and type it here. So we have 10 to the power x, and then we have 10 to the power x plus 5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph it. So you notice that the graph will shift to the left. Okay, so we know that when it's in the parentheses and it's minus, we know it's going to shift to the right. And when it's parentheses and plus, it's going to shift to the left, just like we've talked about before. What I want to talk about next is power E. Um, I know that E, uh, if you find it here, it's it's natural. It's, it's right here. This button is called natural log, so it's going to be the inverse or the uh, opposite, which in this case, you have the power. You have the second button, and you're going to press ln which gives you e and e to the power of three just like it say it states there is 20.8856 now if you were to graph this uh e is just an irrational number it's just like pi uh, it represents a number so in this case what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to graph that so you have second uh ln to the power x and if you graph it you notice there's the exponential, it's an exponential function. Now, if you want to look at the table, um, it's going to be all real numbers, a domain, and here is the range, uh, anything that is greater than zero. So the domain is all real numbers, and the y values are anything that's above zero, okay? So e is just an irrational number, okay? So we're going to graph e to the power x, which I did show you before. That's e to the power x. And we're going to find the asymptote, the domain, the range, the intercepts, minimum and max. We've done minimum and max, and we have talked about asymptotes. 
So let me talk about the asymptote. Uh, the asymptote is actually is actually right here. It will never it will never cross the x axis. So the asymptote is y equals zero. The domain, and we've talked about domain before, is going to be all reals since we're going from negative infinity to positive infinity. The domain is all reals. The range are y values that are greater than zero since it doesn't go below zero. It's asking for the intercept. Here is it when x is zero. When x is zero, this is the intercept. Actually, it's the y intercept. So the y intercept is zero, one. Zero, one. And then if you want to find the max and the min, we got we got it, we have to compare, just like we've done before. We compare when x is at negative four. And we have to compare when x is at 1.5, right? And we notice that when x is negative four, this is actually lower than the other y value. So this will be your this is your min. And this is your max. So this is your min. There's your uh, there's your min. There's your max, and this is your y-intercept. So let me go ahead and erase this. This is actually the y-intercept. The y-intercept, and this right here is a horizontal, is a horizontal asymptote. The domain is all real numbers and the range is y is greater than zero.